Thank you all for tuning in to Primitive Organic Swamp Garden today. Although we have now covered the swamp in a good 12 to 18 inches of wood chips. This is the only remaining grass in the garden here on the far southwest side. <laughs> See a little farm dog down there. We got some mustard greens, some collard greens, a couple of tomatoes and peppers still kind of hanging on in buckets there. You can see some Malabar spinach, a nice new radish bed in between some pine logs. I was hoping to get a nice kind of macro shot of a whole garden with all the wood chips. But, uh, you know, it's late in the afternoon, the sun's already going down, and most of the garden is kind of shaded. And it looks like the pictures weren't coming out great from this particular angle. Although my shadow looks kind of cool. Anyway, um, we'll head down to the garden here in a second and take a more detailed tour. Sorry it's been a couple months since I really made a good update here. It's kind of in that transition from summer, fall to winter garden. Winter garden mode as of tomorrow. We'll be getting our first freeze tonight of the year. Uh, this is kind of our standard normal time to be getting a first freeze, although weather's been kind of strange the last couple of seasons. We had the coldest winter we've experienced in probably 20 years last year. Then we had a long, cool spring followed by a long, cool summer. Didn't really get particularly hot this summer, but we did have some uh, nice warm fall days for a while. Then had kind of an unexpected cold snap. Got down to the low 30s, but stayed above freezing a few weeks ago. Then we got down to 36 last night, and we're probably gonna hit 30 tonight. So that'll be the end of all the frost intolerance, like the beans, and the uh, tomatoes and peppers and we'll probably still have uh, some peas that'll hang on for a while the collards and all that should be you know pretty good to go for the remainder of the winter but, um, yeah let's head down to the garden and uh, check out what's new looks like this uh, part of the video may just be edited out this wasn't particularly great um, just kind of standing on a roof, like a crazy person rambling, and I'm not really sure how much of this y'all can actually see. But let's head down to the garden. Right, I think I'm gonna let y'all go first, or maybe the safer thing is just to put the phone in my pocket for a second. I really don't want the video to cut off though. Maybe I'll, because if it cuts off, then I'll have to open up the video editing software and splice the two pieces together, and then it'll just be a mess. So I'm gonna set this down. All right, that was largely successful in terms of not falling off the roof or damaging oh, the phone. Just my, um, I'm not gonna tell you what I just damaged because I can't think of a polite word to describe what I just damaged. Anyway.
Hey, farm dog. Look at that farm dog. Look at that farm dog. It's such a good farm dog. I know. All right. All right. You can show everybody the farm. Show them what's new on the farm. Show them what's new on the farm. Still got a whole tray of collards here that need to be planted sometime soon. So if we look at where the normal ground level is, it's about here. We've built this up, and you can see this is probably a 10 inch tall pot, and it's nearly buried. The wood chips were a really nice mixture of uh, pine, some oak, a little bit of other things in there, a little bit of tallow. but. Not a huge problem. We have some carrots in a five gallon bucket with a mixture of just potting mix and compost. A couple of peas coming up. Collard green. One last tomato hanging on. It's either gonna get moved into the hoop house tonight or get moved into the actual house tonight or it's going to die. <clears throat> a little oregano plant there, got some crimson clover and a beet and a couple collards, some more collards that need to get planted. Oh look, a farm dog! It's a farm dog! Got some nice daikon radishes down here. This was the compost pile for the last couple of seasons, and now it's going to be a garden bed this winter. We have some parsley amidst the onions and some radishes. We have a large monoculture of daikon here. These get a ton of shade in the fall. I'm hoping uh, they'll be getting a little bit more sun pretty soon as the oak tree above them starts to lose some leaves. Collard. Collard. Farm dog. Some Swiss chard. And a collard. Got a broccoli plant. Some uh, chicory there. It's uh, kind of a dandelion relative that produces beautiful blue flowers. Some of that's just volunteer there. Little collards. Huge, massive spearmint here in between two raised beds. I'm kind of worried it's creeping into the raised beds from underneath, but. There are worse weeds to have, I suppose. Another nice daikon here. Quite a few daikons hanging out. Broccoli. Giant mustard. Got some banana peppers here. Another collard. Some sun chokes and some peas. Big old broccoli. Another broccoli. Another broccoli and a pea and some chard. Got one of these uh, Turkish orange eggplants that was really productive this year, but unfortunately they tasted awful. Uh, since the weather has gotten cold, it looks like these don't want to turn orange. Um, doesn't much matter, they tasted awful. But Turkish eggplants there. So you can kind of see that previously each raised bed was like an island in a sea of nasty grass and other swamp vegetation. And now with all these wood chips everywhere, it actually starts to look more like a garden. This was the Hugo culture bed that we dug, I don't know, maybe two years back now. Um, this is about three foot deep underneath the soil surface, just filled with wood. And then on top it's built up to, uh, it's gotta be close to 18, 24 inches now. Uh, where the actual ground level was here um, 
is even much lower than this bed. And you can see the hegelculture bed is at least a foot taller than this raised bed. And this raised bed is easily eight, 10 inches off the ground. So kind of transitioning to that model where we're building everything up rather than destructively tilling into the soil and just resulting in erosion and flooding and things like that. I think about how forests work in a forest all the trees lose their leaves and their limbs and all of that vegetation falls to the ground and breaks down and <clears throat> is fed upon and that's how nutrient cycling works and if we're constantly tilling we're going to be losing nutrients and exposing our garden beds to flood damage and other things like that so over time we're just going to be building everything up it's a little bit slower of a process initially but the results are so much better Got a little collard here, some broccoli here in the hugel culture with some garlic. This tomato is going to be toast by the morning, so I'll probably plant something else there. Monster Volunteer Casper Eggplant. I didn't realize they got this big. This is one eggplant. It's just, like, massive. Um, I've been wanting to cut that down for a while because it hasn't really been producing a whole lot of fruit since we got cold. Just taking up a ton of space, but I'm gonna see if I can dig that up. Maybe overwinter it in the hoop house. Another broccoli plant here. Some chard or beet, a little bit of dill, carrot, some more mustard and garlic. This area has been continuously cover cropped with legumes for two or three seasons now. It had peas in the spring, then it had cow peas and whole beans in <clears throat> the summer and fall. Now it's going to be collards for a while. I stuck about 20 or 25 of them in there. Also put some carrots in this section here. Got a few little ochre plants hanging on, but this is where I was kind of picking pounds and pounds of beans earlier this summer was this area. I had them trellised about 15 feet. Got some more mustard and radishes. Got a little herb garden down here in the shade. Some cilantro, some uh, dill, some parsley, some purple mustard, some spinach, some more dill, a couple little kale plants, uh, more parsley, dill, spinach. Still gotta figure out what to do with these blueberry bushes here. They've been sitting around for quite a while. These are the only beans that I haven't chopped down yet, but uh, after the freeze tonight, tomorrow, these will be mostly toast. There was a cherry tomato that was climbing up the beans for a while, but they don't look like they've ripened. So this afternoon is mainly going to be trying to bring all of the frost intolerant plants either in the hoop house, in the house, or taking cuttings of them at least and trying to save some pieces of them for next spring. Might have to make some more green beans with dinner. This so loquat tree is going to be a lot happier now that it's not going to have any more weed pressure. Uh, there's two to three feet of wood chips at the base of this loquat tree now. The asparagus are going to be nice and happy. Should have some really good shoots coming out of this in the spring. Uh, this area was kind of a grassy, weedy mess for a while. <clears throat> but all of this is going to be so much more manageable now. It's another new bed that's only been here, I don't know, a couple days. Um, I think I put carrots in here. This is probably my most important thing to bring in. It's also the heaviest. It's got a citrus tree that I started from seed. It's got a massive bell pepper plant. And then just a couple of little things, pea and basil. But I gotta haul that inside tonight. That one's not gonna be fun. I actually forgot about that. Some more peppers. I probably just need to cut off this video and start trying to stick plastic on the hoop house before uh, it gets any colder and darker. Um, I should have probably done that yesterday, but nice daikon there. So this is kind of where the wood chip portion of the garden kind of ends. Um, I didn't have quite enough to do the entire yard, so that's why there's still a little bit of grass over here. <clears throat> but this is also the part of the garden that's least intensively in production at the moment. This ground cherry is definitely coming inside. Um, it looks awful. It's got some insect damage on it, but um, I really want to have some ground cherries next spring and the seeds take a while to start, so I'm going to bring that one in. 
Yeah, it's gonna look real different out here tomorrow. There's so many pepper plants that are in the ground that I don't think I'm gonna actually dig up, so it's just gonna be a lot of uh, dead shit tomorrow. We'll see. Um, you know, the first freeze is also a, an exciting time. You know, after that, your insect and disease pressures are quite low. I like winter gardening a lot more. This is one of my prized seed started citrus trees. Um, that would probably be okay, but I don't know if I want to chance it. So all that's going to have to go in the hoop house, I think. Um, these collards out here ain't going to notice the frost. I'll just get a little bit sweeter. But yeah, I'm glad y'all got to see the winter garden with all the wood chips. And we'll probably do some type of video update next week or week after. It's going to go from... Uh, like we were at 70 degrees yesterday we're gonna get down to like 28 tonight and it's gonna be right back up to like 75 or 74 next weekend I'm really sad about this Malabar spinach though that's not gonna enjoy the cold and this plant is way too big to try to move um, all these dragon cayennes I gotta do something with those and the banana peppers I think all in all there's probably 40 pepper plants out here I don't care so much about trying to save tomatoes. They're just too disease prone and they also grow pretty quickly so it's not hard to start them in the spring. But the peppers I really kind of want to do something with. Uh, it's just way too many of them. But, um, yeah, well thank you all for hanging out today. A little volunteer college. <clears throat> I appreciate you all tuning in. Sorry if the video was kind of long and rambling but uh, we just haven't really had a sufficient garden update in a while. and. There's a lot to see and there's always a lot for me to ramble about. So anyway, thank you all for tuning in and I hope your winter gardening season is going phenomenal. And if you happen to be in some place that's like zone two or zone three and there's not a whole lot of winter gardening to do, we hope you're enjoying looking through seed catalogs and picking out really cool stuff for your next season. And hope you got lots of food preserved from your summer and fall harvest so you can kind of enjoy some of the garden produce throughout the winter. Should be uh, firing up the grill a lot more often now that it's getting cold. Don't do a whole lot of cooking on the grill in the summer just because it's too hot and it's too wet and there's too many mosquitoes, but um, oh, all these avocado trees that keep popping up in the compost pile, I guess I need to dig those up and see if I can put them somewhere. Lots to do today. Wow, that's a big daikon over there. Let's see it from here. Lots to do, lots to do. Oh, we didn't even look at the hoop house yet. <clears throat> There's just so many things that I need to put in here that aren't in here yet. But I suppose we need to make some room. We'll just take a quick peek and then I'm going to start busting tail. What's in here now? This was so shoddily thrown together this year. Okay, I got some dragon cayennes, some okra, and some banana peppers, and some tomatoes, and there was a big fire ant hill here, and I dug it up and drowned them all in a bucket with soap, and then put a basil plant where the fire ants were. A little turnip green there. Gotta get all these peppers off of here. There's always just so much to do in so little time amazing how much food you can produce in just a tiny little backyard. Another broccoli plant. I don't know why I put that in here. It'd be fine outside. I just had like 20 of them. That chocolate hob over here in the back is my pride and joy. And it's got fire ants in the pot, which is going to make it difficult to bring indoors. Not really sure what I'm going to do about this yet, but it is my pride and joy. It's gonna be a tough one. I may take it out of the pot and repot it in a pot without fire ants, or I don't know. That's just gonna be a really tough decision to make because it's my absolute favorite plant in the garden and it's got fire ants in the pot. Anyway, oh by the way, this hoop house was thrown together for like 45 bucks. All you need is a couple pieces of you know cheap PVC pipe. I used some bamboo to kind of prop it up a little bit. 
The plastic's the most expensive part, but even that's not terrible. You can use the same plastic for at least, you know, two or three years, if not more. <clears throat> all this was just scrap wood that I, like the door and the frame, it's all just scrap wood, you know. Um, I'm not trying to spend a ton of money on trying to save money on my grocery bill, so. Anyway, I'm going to pack this out later today. Thank you all again for tuning in, and I'm so glad you got to see all the new wood chip action, and I'm just excited because the wood chips are going to keep everything warmer, they're going to repel a lot of pest insects, they're going to conserve soil moisture, which makes for a much better you know, habitat for all of your soil microorganisms. It's also going to help reduce uh, flooding. You know, when we get our flood events here in the swamp, the wood chips are going to soak a lot of that flooding up so that the plants don't have root rot issues. Um, and on the rare occasion that we, you know, go more than a week without rain, such as sometimes in the fall, you know, the wood chips are going to hold down a lot of moisture and the plants aren't going to need water even, you know, in a brief drought. There's just so many benefits to the wood chips. You just got to be really careful not to incorporate them into the soil because as different bacteria decompose the wood chips, nitrogen is utilized in that process because wood chips are so high in carbon. So any nitrogen that's going to be available is going to get sucked into that decomposition process and that nitrogen would not be available for a plant to use until well after the wood chips were completely broken down, which can take, you know, depending on the temperature and the moisture level of your environment, it can take anywhere from a few months to a few years. And we just want to be careful that we don't incorporate wood chips into the soil because then we're going to start seeing plants that are, you know, chlorotic, yellow, suffering from nitrogen deficiency. Not because there is no nitrogen, but because that nitrogen is tied up in a process. Um, you can see here I accidentally spilled some wood chips like into this garden bed. And it's not a big deal if they're just sitting on the surface. Um, but before I plant anything here or top dress this with more compost in the spring, I need to kind of scrape these wood chips off. Wood chips go around your garden beds and they can go on top of the soil to insulate and mulch plants. Just be careful not to mix wood chips with your soil or compost. Uh, just keep them on top. It's a pro tip, but uh, it's an important one. So a lot of people you know, complain about plants looking yellow when they start going wood chip route. Uh, just don't mix them in your soil. And if they accidentally get mixed in your soil, then just supplement you know high nitrogen stuff for a while. Um, you know fish emulsion, urine, green compost, uh, grass clippings, anything that's really high in nitrogen, coffee grounds, <clears throat> that can offset some of those effects. Um, but it's better to just leave the wood chips on top and around the beds. Don't mix it in. All right, well, I am having trouble turning off the camera because I'm having such a good time out here, but um, there's a ton of work to do, so I can't just walk around with a camera and ramble. But, uh, Again, thank you all for tuning in, and I better cut this off before YouTube doesn't even let me upload this video. We're at like 20 minutes or something ridiculous now, and I'm not even going to have time to put any guitar work to this video. So it's just going to be me rambling with no background music. Although I've had a handful of complaints about the background music, um, that it makes it difficult to hear me rambling. So depending on your perspective there... Say bye. Say bye. Say I'm a farm dog. I'm a farm dog. I'm a little farm dog for a little farm. <laughs>